This is a synthetic seed crystal. It is placed in a six-foot-high tank filled with nearly a metric ton of supersaturated potassium dihydrogen phosphate, or KDP. As it rotates on a turntable in the tank, the crystal begins to grow. In just two months, the crystal grows to be as large as 800 pounds. With conventional methods of growing crystals, this process would take nearly two years. When complete, the crystal is carefully cleaned. It's removed from the tank. Then it's measured. And finally, it's cut into 40 by 40 centimeter plates to be used in the National Ignition Facility to focus, transmit, and direct laser beams on their way to the target chamber. This is the optical processing facility. It's a class 100 clean room. That means no more than 100 particles of dust or other contaminants larger than half a micron can be present in each cubic foot of air. The optics are cleaned, spin coated with anti-reflective materials, and thoroughly inspected for defects before they can be released for installation in the lasers. All of the optics for the National Ignition Facility are processed here. In the final quality inspection, backlighting is reflected on the surface of each optic to detect possible coating defects. And high intensity lights are used to find optical defects. Every lens, window, crystal, and mirror must pass the stringent quality tests before they can be installed in the National Ignition Facility. In the optics assembly building, Technicians in clean room body suits prepare to install a spatial filter lens optic into a modular line replaceable unit, or LRU. The LRU is a large metal frame that holds various types of lenses or mirrors. The LRUs can easily be installed into an F beam line or be removed for maintenance. This is the preamplifier module assembly facility, or PAM factory, at the National Ignition Facility. Here, technicians assemble and align all the components that go into a PAM. The PAM amplifies a laser input pulse from a small optical fiber to a level of about 10 joules. There are 48 PAMs in the facility, and each is a line replaceable unit that provides not only amplification, but also pulse shaping. The output from each PAM is split into four beams that travel onto the NIF power amplifier. Each component in the preamplifier modules must be carefully assembled, aligned, and tested for accuracy. This is an optical switch called a plasma electrode pockle cell or Pepsi. Technicians are testing the Pepsi, which allows light to either pass through or reflect off of a polarizer. By rotating the polarization of the laser beam, the Pepsi directs the laser light back and forth through the main amplifier system four times, picking up energy with each pass. Then it is switched out to continue on its way toward the power amplifier. Its four 40 by 40 centimeter apertures contain a crystal plate of potassium dihydrogen phosphate, or KDP, sandwiched between two fused silica windows. The manufacturing of the National Ignition Facility target chamber began in the fall of 1997. Assembly and welding at Livermore were performed in a temporary cylindrical steel enclosure constructed in June 1998. After the bottom three plates were welded together to form a supporting base, the other plates were lowered into place and held together with guy wires until they were welded together. After completion, the target chamber was lifted by an enormous 14-story tall crane and hoisted onto a massive concrete pedestal already installed inside the target bay. A combination of hydraulic jacks, roller assemblies, shims, and anchor bolts 
were then used to adjust the chamber for final alignment. The National Ignition Facility target chamber is a 10 meter diameter sphere with openings for all the laser beam lines. Here, one complete beam line assembly is attached to the chamber. There are also several beam line housings to which the final optics assemblies have not yet been attached. The final optics assemblies focus and smooth the beam and convert its frequency from infrared to ultraviolet light for more efficient interaction with the target. The various other covered portholes will accommodate special diagnostic equipment used to monitor beam quality and record the results of NIF experiments. Inside the target chamber, special louvered material covers the wall to protect it from flying debris when shots are fired. These technicians will be taking you inside the National Ignition Facility target chamber in a specially designed target chamber service system lift. The targets, however, are placed in the chamber by an automated system with no workers present. They're dressed in full body suits to protect the chamber, which must be kept as clean as possible from dust, lint, or microscopic particles. The lift brings workers into the chamber for inspection and maintenance. The service lift can bring workers right up to the louvered inner wall. The portholes will house special diagnostic equipment that will monitor beam quality and record experimental result. We're going to do an 18 kilojoule shot and then a 19 kilojoule shot if time permits. Power conditioning. Power conditioning is ready. Pepsi. Pepsi is ready. Beam control. Injection lasers. Pilots ready. Into diagnostics. LDs ready. Duty engineer. DEs ready. Shot director. Shot director ready for shot. Starting countdown for shot on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Clock is running. Five, four, three, two, one, shot. A key part of the National Ignition Facility is the deformable mirror, shown here, which is located at the end of the main amplifier. The mirror is controlled by computer software. It uses an array of 39 actuators to create a surface that will correct for aberrations that accumulate in the beam because of minute distortions in the optics. Here you can see the mirror's surface being adjusted. This precise adjustment will help to better focus the beams to the required minute spot size of about 100 microns or even smaller. That's less than the diameter of a human hair.